Hello, today we are comparing the VWAP and the moving average indicators for trading and algorithmic trading. We will use both indicators for building a trading bot that we will backtest on the Bitcoin data. The profit returns of the strategies we will use in this video can vary from around 200% up to an outstanding 473% in returns over three years of data. If you are also interested in the coding part, the backtest is done using Python language and I will leave a link in the description so you can download the Jupyter Notebook file and have access to the same code I will be using throughout this video. Aside from being my favorite indicator in trading, why is VWAP important here? VWAP can help traders determine whether a security is trading at a fair value or maybe not. And this is crucial information because it means that if a price is trading above the VWAP curve or far above the VWAP curve, this could indicate that it's overvalued. Conversely, if the current price is trading below the VWAP curve, this could indicate that the security is undervalued. So in a nutshell, we always expect the price to converge back to the VWAP level at some point. And this is what we can see on this example where the difference between the price candles and the yellow VWAP curve increased at this point before the price converged back to the VWAP level and bounced off the yellow curve again. And we can clearly notice the difference between the moving average curve and the VWAP yellow curve. To calculate the VWAP, we can use the following expression. Let's look into this. It's equal to the uh, cumulative mean price times the volume divided by the cumulative volume, where the mean price is nothing but the average price between the high, low, closing price. So we're simply summing these three values and dividing by three. And by the word cumulative, we mean the total sum since the trading session opened. The trading session can be reset daily, weekly, or monthly, depending on the time frame we are aiming for. So we can see now that it's totally different than the moving average computation and I think it's usually better than a simple moving average just because it holds more information on the trading volume. Notice the two volume related terms that are included in the VWAP expression. We can also use VWAP to determine the optimal entry and exit points for trades since it also acts as a dynamic support and resistance level that moves along with the price and this is what we will be using the VWAP for in the strategy we are showing in this video. Another reminder, if you are new to this channel, we always share the Python code in the description of the video. You can download it and experiment on your own, changing the parameters and optimizing your trading. The strategy we'll be using is the following. First, we will look at a series or a certain number of candles that are either below or above the VWAP curve or the moving average curve, whichever indicator we will be using for the comparison. If the candles are below the curve, then we're looking at a short signal and the entry point will be determined when a candle is close enough to the curve we are comparing with. So in this case, if we are taking the moving average curve, which is the yellow curve on this example, we have, let's say six or seven candles that are completely below the uh, moving average curve. So we are in a downtrend. We will look for a short position. So if these candles are followed immediately by a candle that gets close to the moving average, we expect the price to bounce on this dynamic resistance level and continue in a downtrend. So we enter our short position at this point. If we are using the VWAP curve, then we will apply the same. So we have this part here, which we have a series of candles below the VWAP curve, then a certain candle bouncing very close to the VWAP level. So we enter our short position at this point. And in the opposite case, when we have candles above the curve and a certain candle coming down and bouncing very close to the curve, we enter a long position. For the sake of the comparison we will be applying in this video, we will be using the same strategy, one time relying on the moving average curve and another time relying on the VWAP curve. And this will allow for a simple comparison. This is our Jupyter notebook file. First, we are loading our data, the Bitcoin US dollar candlesticks, 15 minutes time frame between 2019 and 2022. We are cleaning the data formats in the cell then we are using the pandas technical analysis module to uh, compute the VWAP and the EMA. Then we can compute our signal. So we're using a certain number of back candles. And this is the number of consecutive candles that should be tested if they are above or below the curve, whether we are using the moving average or the VWAP curve. So in this cell, we are using the uh, exponential moving average. We are computing the EMA signal for each of these back candles. We're going to test if they are all above or below the uh, certain curve. Then we store our signal in a new column in our data frame called EMA signal. 
The signal values will be equal to um, an integer or a category it's equal to zero or three in the case we don't have a particular signal and when we have a clear short or long signal we will return two and one two for the long signal and one for the short signal so these are the values that we will find in our new column ema signal in our data frame then using exactly the same approach we are computing the vwap signal and we are adding this as a new column in our data frame. Obviously, you can change the number of back candles if you want to test for 10 consecutive candles going below or above the um, curve, the VWAP curve or the EMA curve, we can change this number right here. So now that we have computed both the EMA and the VWAP signals, we can compute the total signal. We'll call it total EMA signal and total VWAP signal. So these will add on top of the previously computed signal if we have any candle that's getting very close to the uh, to the curve and we assume that price is going to bounce off this curve and reverse direction so the distance has to be also included as a variable i called it my close distance in here for the bitcoin us dollar i'm using 100 if you change the currency you will have to use a different value so for now i just tried it for 100 it's i didn't have the time to optimize it you can experiment on these values on your own once you download the um, the jupyter notebook in the total ema signal function first we check if the ema signal equal to two so we have a long trend meaning all the back candles we have tested are above the ema curve and if this is the case we add another condition this part here is going to check whichever is closer is it the highest or the lowest point of the candle to the ema uh, curve and if the distance between either the high or the low whichever is closer to the ma curve is below or equal to my close distance parameter in this case we return two as a total ma signal because this is our long entry point then we do the same in reverse for the short positions and we do exactly the same as well for the total vwap signal function but here we rely on the vwap values instead of the ema or the moving average curve so we have to be careful here if you are trying to test the ema signal part we have to uh, use the function total ema signal here unless if you want to use the vwap one we can replace the ema part here by the vwap now we are starting with the ema one so i'm going to leave it this way then to visualize the uh, points or the signal points we can visualize these using these uh, two cells and we can see the purple points showing short positions here short entry positions at this point and zoom in so we have candles below the curve and at the same time a candle got close enough to uh, to the curve we can also see an example of a long position where we have a uh, certain number of candles above the curve and then one candles low got close enough to the yellow curve which is the EMA curve now for the back testing we can use different trade management uh, approaches so for now we are using the ATR so I'm computing the ATR as a new column here because we're going to use it to set our stop loss and take profits the uh, take profit level is set according to the stop loss distance where we have a take profit stop loss ratio of 2.5 and the stop loss is equal to 0.8 times the uh, ATR so the stop loss distance from the current buying or selling position is going to be computed using 0.8 times the ATR so it's ATR related and for the backtest I'm using the backtesting.py package it works well for this video for whatever we are testing in here so if we have a signal equal to and we are allowing one trade at a time so the length of the current trades is equal to zero then we compute the stop loss and the take profit distances and then we apply a buy position using these two values stop loss and take profit and the uh, size which is 50 percent of the equity for the moment and when we have a total signal equal to one so it's a short position we are applying the same approach then i'm launching the uh, back test on the data frame calling my strategy which is the class we have inherited here from the base class strategy coming from the back testing package a hundred thousand in cash as a start and i'm using a margin or a leverage one to five for the moment we're not including commissions because we need to be able to compare this strategy with the previous strategies where we didn't use commissions so now we have a return of 296 percent with a bad sharp ratio of 0.6 so although we have good returns then we can check it's an annual return of 70 percent as you can see here 
And this is our equity curve to show you how the model behaved throughout the three years of data. So we have a drawdown at first, then it struggled for, let's say, a year and a half or almost two years, and then we had a good climb in price. And this climb is happening when we see the price volatility increase right here. So this model didn't work well when the uh, volatility was very limited, which we can see right here. So this is, these are the candles and the trades on top of these. So if the price is not moving with a high enough volatility, the model doesn't work well. Whenever we had large movements, it seems that the model worked very well and we started increasing our profits. Now we can try exactly the same thing, but using the VWAP. So I'm going to replace the EMA signal here by VWAP to call the VWAP function. We can recheck the signal visually here. And then I'm rerunning the backtesting part using exactly the same parameters as for the EMA. Otherwise, it wouldn't be fair. The total return in this case is 473%. It's almost double than what we've got using the EMA curve. The sharp ratio is almost as bad as the EMA uh, signal and the um, equity curve is really disappointing. So we reached, however, at some point 2,400% in return, but then it didn't work well. Afterwards, we have a big drawdown. Just as a reminder, I didn't really optimize the parameters. I simply put random numbers or the uh, size of the equity, the margin, the uh, stop loss, take profit ratios, and so on. So you might want to change these and experiment on your own, as well as the number of back candles to be considered and the my close distance parameter. So we have like four or five parameters that you can easily tune and fine tune according to your style and check if you can find a good compromise between these parameters to increase our sharp ratio and decrease our drawdown periods. If you want to increase the sharp ratio, usually you want to decrease your margin or um, your leverage. Let's say we take one over two and we run the back test again. It takes some time. So we can see that our returns decreased to 123%. However, our sharp ratio increased to 1.02 uh, from 0 0.6. So also you might want to consider the fact that if you are using a leveraged account, you are decreasing your uh, sharp ratio because obviously you are increasing your risk and therefore the drawdown periods are more severe. And that's all I had to tell you for this one. I hope it will be helpful for your trading and to give you an idea about the VWAP and the difference between the VWAP and the moving average indicator. Until our next one, trade safe and see you next time.